uh, you see where the Norwich pin, or the Norwich uh, where Norwich is up there. So we went down uh, to Binghamton and then down into into um, Pennsylvania and met up with uh, Vera Scroggins, uh, who was our guide. Vera lives in. Um, Uh, Vera lives in um, in Susquehanna County, and she has been a tireless advocate for um, the many who have uh, been suffering through this whole ordeal down in, in, in PA. Um, and she's been leading tours uh, for lots of municipal officer uh, or official groups, um, uh, citizens who are concerned, and also. Um, a number of international groups have been coming to her as well as um, other countries are looking to import liquid um, uh, uh, natural gas into their countries or looking into, some countries are looking into um, exploring this technology in their own country and they want to see what it looks like. Um, so, let me just move on to the next place we mm -hmm. went to was to visit with, um, I just looked up her last name. Does any of you remember Tammy's last name? Yeah. Matthews, was it? No, I think Matthew no. was her husband's name. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, actually, I, I would appreciate, I know there's some of you here who came on the tour. Please jump in <laughs> because it was so much information. Um, and I just want to make sure that we're you know, accurate in what we present. Um, uh, but this is her property right here, and um, the nearest uh, the nearest wells to her home are uh, one is three thousand feet, and another one is seven thousand feet, well outside um, the area with which the uh, companies are, are have been required to. Um, kind of pay attention to, but her well was contaminated in December of, of last year, and uh, she described to us her just horrific experience um, when she discovered the problem, and now as she and her family live with it. Uh, we do have um, some video footage. Let me first just start with some photographs. This is Vera Scroggins. This is where we met at the Salt Springs State Park. Rendezvous with her. And uh, she's known by first name with, with many of the uh, uh, gas company workers as she takes people around and they come out and greet her, tell her to tell all of us to step away from um, the properties. He, this gentleman in particular, went around and photographed all of our license plates, and um, you know they want to make sure that uh, anyone who comes to visit these places don't get too close and look. I guess. This is Tammy. Um, we visited her home, and um, this is behind her is um, a water buffalo. She is provided. Uh, non-potable but usable water um, is it WPX that is WPX. is providing them with water, and um, uh, and this is a site also. This is an old, an, an earlier well. They dug a new well, and um, and that is the one that that uh, that went contaminated. Maybe Eddie, we should go ahead and okay, show so the footage now. Where I left off. <laughs> One of the houses which had their well contaminated. This is what people have to go through. People donating water.
my brother-in-law gave us a two burner electric hot plate thing that we just disconnected the propane completely. And we were even afraid to use our furnace because yeah. below our kitchen sink is where the water lines came mm -hmm. in. And those water lines the, the winter before had frozen. And our furnace is attached to the ceiling in our basement right next to those water lines. Um, they, had, they had attached it to the ceiling because it had flooded in recent years. And so we were afraid that those water lines would break and it would send methane at our furnace. So we used um, electric space heaters last winter. Luckily it was a warm winter and we got away with it. This house isn't insulated all that well. So if it were a cold winter, we would have been very cold. We had thought about getting a pellet stove or something to help with heating, and there was no way we could have had an open flame in there. We just we weren't. Um, so, anyways, we we were told not to use any, you know, the, the stove or you know, and showering and stuff. And then we had heard from other people, not the DEP or this other guy, but we had heard about you know possible heavy metals and stuff coming in that other people had been experiencing and so we decided to get camp showers to use for our grandchildren which is a five gallon rubber bladder thing that get filled with water and my husband was getting um, bottled water up at his mom's because we were going through so much of it we couldn't afford to just keep buying it um, so he would take our jugs up and fill them at his mom's up in Conklin and bring 30 or 40 gallons home at a time and we would use those for them. Or my daughter also had a friend up here up the road a couple miles that she would pay them to take the kids every once in a while to take baths, tub baths. Um, in March, well in February I guess, they came back and retested our water, the DEP did. And our levels in, of our methane had doubled from what they were in December. So, I mean, they were so high that we were very concerned. Um, so the DEP, when they found out what the test results were, they had asked the, the gas company to come out and give us the water buffalo and vent our well. The Friday before they vented our well, the DEP had come out and they, they have a meter that they would stick um, underneath the vent cap on our well and they were getting a level of 82% free gas methane coming out of our well. Now that it's vented, are you doing any better? I'm sorry? Now that it's vented, are you doing better? Yeah, now that it's vented, we can use our water. It's, it's town water in here. They, they gave us a big cattle tank and they fill it every day. The gas company sends people out to fill it every day. And, so we can use it for showering and stuff like that without worrying about it blowing up. We're not, it's not a part of the water, so it doesn't affect the water. And again, this happened, you didn't have this problem before the gas room, before they even started working or doing the, the, the explosions. Your water was fine. Yeah, our water was fine. We moved in November of 2010. Our water was fine until December of 2011. Um, and they had been drilling and fracking on the Helen Beck and the few wells. Well, well, it seems like a nightmare, actually, what you're describing here. I mean, it's pretty... It was pretty I mean, scary. It's, 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 I, I feel for you uh, to live this way. The, the second set of tests that we got back from the DEP, the cover letter said that... Um, our, our levels were extremely high and it was an explosion risk and even if when they were to cut the, the lines, the methane still can work its way up through the ground, it could work its way into our basement. They did test in our basement and didn't find you know, high enough levels to set off the meter at that point. Um, our basement is an old stone basement for the most part so we're hoping that it works its way out before it gets into the house. But before we got the water buffalo from the time the water went bad until the time we got the water buffalo and the granddaughter's bedroom was above our kitchen. I don't know why we never thought about this, but she was getting sick in the mornings. She would wake up and she would vomit. 
and we thought she was waking up hungry, mm -hmm. so we would leave crackers on her nightstand so she, you know, she'd have something to snack on before she got up. And since we got the water buffalo, she has not had any symptoms of this. And we had to leave the water running all the time in order for it to not erupt because, like I said, they they had said that. You know, when you turn the water on, it would relieve the bubble and it would force the water out. And we were concerned about it accumulating the gas and accumulating in our house. And we left our water running 24 hours a day so that it would keep the pressure off this bubble. And we had somebody come out in front of ours with an infrared camera and we could see the plumes actually coming off the wellhead. It was like clouds through the infrared camera. And so we knew that there was the, all this methane in there. So we left the water running all the time. The sink in the kitchen and the methane was right above that. So, I, you know, we, we don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that, you know, that stuff was seeping up into her bedroom and causing her illness. Have you ever been tested for radon? Uh, I live in an area which a lot of probably all of us do, uh, heavy radon in that area. And I, uh, I got tested for my mom about 10 years ago, and it was high. And as was my brothers across the road, he'd known that for years, and they had a mitigation system in place. But what that does is, we have old farmhouses on third floors, and they cover it with neoprene, and they vent from your basement outside the house to carry it in the radio, and then you need to up to your and into your living space. So I wonder whether, you know, that's been one of my concerns with this, whether it's going to liberate uh, radon that's already in the Radon. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder whether you've ever been tested for radon counts. No, I don't even think we have. We've been so consumed with all the other stuff, I don't think we've ever even. We still have to use electric heat this morning. We're hoping. I don't think so. I think we're okay. Um, I don't know. I, I'm seriously considering putting the methane detector near our furnace in the basement just to make sure and be safe. Because if that thing starts going off, I would definitely want to reconsider what we are heating. But, um, we haven't had to use heat. We have a, <laughs> oh, one of those even pure heaters or whatever in our home right now that's, that keeps it warm on chilly mornings. But we haven't. We're in the process of switching propane companies, so we're waiting for a couple weeks. We have a, another tank coming in. So. I haven't even considered that at this point. These people are vented. I know they have bad water. They have um, their water test posted. <coughs> the people up the road from us um, was exactly the same day they were. The DPT was testing them in December, the same exact day as us because they had asked us if we knew where those people had lived. At the time, we didn't. They say it's salt springs migrating into our well. And it's not there. <laughs> um, there's a state park up the road here that has a little bit of methane coming in. I guess the guy used to heat his home and stuff like that 100 years ago, and so they say that it's seeping our way now. Okay, so the reason why we occur now as opposed to before? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's, that's our point. There's got to be a reason. It's just pure coincidence. Yeah, right? yeah. It's not their fault. It's never their fault. Never their fault. Okay. It's never their fault. They've never admitted to anything in our county or in our state yet. So they always say it's not their fault. Everything's pre existing. Yes, sir? Um, I was wondering do you know the depth of your walls and your neighbor walls? Um, they're all roughly the same depth. Ours is 158. I think theirs might be a little deeper. And they're all relatively the same. The guy next door to us, he has a 30-foot well. There are springs in the area, so some people have shallower wells. I'm done with I what I mean, it's, on, it's on the, it should be on the inside. This is a, this is an old well, this one's not used. That's the one right there under the center. Well, we're having problems. Well, I was just curious because I know Pennsylvania doesn't have any regulations on Does New York water. have regulations for water wells? Uh, I was wondering. Um, I know the well drillers have to 
follow rules. Like they have to run casing until they yeah. hit bedrock, and then they have to. Well, we have something. We're like at that. bedrock. You know, and yeah. this well is only yeah. about five years old. It's a fairly new well, so well, so they have better standards. You know, no, no, that's not saying you can't really grow a well and do whatever you want with it. But a company that comes in that does it. Yeah, this is an actual. Correct. Right. Most companies are. Uh, this was I was just curious. Yeah, we can call the company actually and ask them about the case. Oh, I was just them. curious, I didn't know. Yeah, DA Beavers build our well, and we said everything was above standard with our well. Because I called them when we started having problems and asked them if they would know why it would be our well. And um, I guess the, the pump sits five feet from the bottom of the, the well. Um, the gas company has said our well is broken. Um, I, Actually, just heard about a gas forum meeting at Penn State where some well expert was talking about, or some, no, it was a gas drilling expert, I guess, that was saying that we have the equivalent of Wheaties in our well, <laughs> the cereal. And what does and that mean? I can't understand that. I think um, he was saying nutritionally it's the same as Wheaties in our well, and I said it's probably more like Rice Krispies because when you, when I had a video camera that I, I, and she actually put it on YouTube. I have videos of her wells and it has it bubbling. You can see that it's like with the camera inside and it's boiling and bubbling. And before they put the stack on, and then also it's spritzing. We have videos of it coming out from all the pressure spritzing out. Did you offer any of the gas people a drink of water? <laughs> no, they never drink it, but we, have, we do go for periodically. But I don't we'll talk to them too much anymore. We have a lawyer, so they, the lawyers talk amongst themselves. We don't talk to the gas company much anymore. So we try to avoid that. There are ways of testing to differentiate between surface methane and... Yes, they are. They have done a bunch of isotopic testing. But our contention at this point is whether it's uh, biogenic or thermogenic, it has moved. Right. Why is it moving to this kind of degree? Yeah. And what is causing the movement? So that's what the DEP is looking at. At this point, they don't even say it has to be thermogenic. If it has moved and has this is happening besides the metals moving with it and the radioactivity, then they feel there is a responsibility by the gas companies. They have just found Cabot responsible for another group of homes in the southeast part of our county. Lenox, Pennsylvania, for also gas migration and contamination from a well there. And that's their second area that they've been found responsible for. And so they will also now see if they're going to make WPX responsible for this group of homes because something made it move. And, uh, and we didn't have any earthquakes, so something's happening here. And then across the road there, they have high levels of arsenic in their water. It's above the MCL, which is the about above the allowable limits. They serve food. They claim they're using bottled water. I went in there to question them and ask them about it. And it's posted on the wall. If you go inside there, the DEP has the results posted on the wall. Why are they letting a store continue to be open? That to me, I'm questioning that. We're making all kinds of phone calls. Why would you allow food to be served when you have high arsenic and you claim you're using bottled water? How do I know? But why as a business? We have a number of restaurants that have been affected. They're still allowed to be opened. And that, I've never seen that before. I don't know, do we live in India now? What country are we in? I can't even tell it's the United States anymore. This is the first time in my life that things like this is happening and they allow the businesses to continue. We have dairy farms with rashes on the people's bodies, rashes on the cows, they're continuing to milk. The milk is going into the milk, into the food chain. So where this milk is going, any milk from our state, any food from our state has possible contamination. So it is going out into the, into the uh, stream here. Is, why is this being allowed? So we have to keep making phone calls. Why should we as citizens have to make phone calls? But we do. We have to put pressure on them. We have to tell the media, get them embarrassed so that they will do something. Now we're pushing about the, the restaurants. We're pushing about the dairy farms, which are being allowed to continue despite what we are seeing and what is happening to their water. Their water changes. The families have stomach problems, rashes on their bodies, and they still know. And there's girls and there's drilled wells on school property also. Right. 
you know that is troubling. That is troubling. And pipelines put in near the schools. So that's all troubling. And unless you make a stink about it, it's business as usual. They are being preferred and promoted and supported in this state, carte blanche, no matter what they do. I said to the DEP, what will it take for you to shut down a company? They couldn't answer me. How many violations will it take? How many times do they have to be found guilty of contaminating our environment? <coughs> what will it take? No answer. They're not getting fined for the violations. They're not getting fined for most of the violations, right? I haven't been able to find fines. I have to ask them. Where, what kind of fines are you giving these people? You have all these notice of violations and you say they're responsible for it. Where are the fines? Even that is difficult to get an answer and it's not always happening. The fines have to hurt. Have to hurt. Oh, they don't hurt that much. They won't. That won't. No, but they have we have over 8,000 in our state alone, eight, over 8,000 violations for this type of drilling. 74 operators, eight, over 8,000 violations. And the fines come out to, I'm trying to remember, I got it with me, maybe like over a million, a little over a million. I mean, that's like nothing. I just read recently that they um, Couple of million. imposed an impact fee. Yes. Is this somehow is it going to affect how the violations are levied? Or? No, that's just a fee to, it's almost like a tax. retroactive for the past few years. So we'll see what we can do with that. What are we going to do with that? Well, hopefully they get as much money as they can because they have to clean up the mess. And I don't know if it can be cleaned up, but they can try. And at this point, all our budgets, the whole state is still hurting for money. Our local governments are hurting for money. Even the, the school district where they have the gas wells, they're getting, they got maybe, let's say, 90000 about 90000 a year. They're hurting for money. They have to raise the school tax. They have to let go of personnel. So it's it's not a question of money. The thing is, what is what is our water worth? What is our air worth to you? Does it have a price? Did for me, say, it is priceless. Did you say that was a water truck that just went by? Yeah, that's yeah. a water truck. That Where do they get the water? They get the water from the Susquehanna River. They're permitted by the SRBC, Susquehanna River Basin Commission. So we have a water withdrawal center at the river, uh, maybe about 10 minutes from here in Halstead. We definitely would like to see that. We'd like to see that. And you can see the pumps and the hoses and all the tankers, the blue tankers that hold the water. And I just recently went there with another crew and they were taking movies. We went on the site itself. And then you can also see from across the river because they told us when we went on the site, this is private property. It's leased by Cabot. And they asked us to leave, so we took a bunch of pictures and then we left. But uh, they withdraw from the river, they withdraw from creeks, and they come in from municipal uh, water treatment plants, like from Tunkhannock, which is about 45 minutes to an hour away. So let's say about an hour away from different towns, they bring in water. So it's coming from all different directions. And then where does it go? Yeah. Where do they put it? They the recycle night? as much as they can, they keep reusing it, they take out some. Uh, do some partial treatment. They were partial treatment plant in our county. And then they add more chemicals and water, and they can reuse as much as they can. Then they go to whatever is left injection wells in western Pennsylvania and Ohio. And uh, who knows what else? I mean, it's very hard to track, very hard to get answers. If you ask a company, very difficult to get an answer. So they have a closed system. They have a closed system, okay, I would say, at this point. They have to truck out some of the stuff that they take out. Yes, they have to truck out. We have brine tanks on every single gas site. One brine tank at least per well. And they have to empty them out at least once a week. And they're taking them somewhere. Either, either they're reusing them in the, in the system, or it's being put into injection. So yes, there's all kinds of liquid, all kinds of waste, besides drilling mud, drill cuttings, that's always a nice one too that they have. They have truckloads coming out of the sites with drill cuttings. And they have to dry them out and then they bring them to landfills. So they were bringing them to New Jersey for a while and I went and I would ask them, finally, I ask also drivers and workers questions because sometimes I get an answer. 
And they said, oh yeah, we're going to New Jersey, they told me last year. And I said, oh yeah, because I have family in New Jersey. And they mentioned the site. And I said, oh, that's right here, my family. Edison, New Jersey, the landfill. So, Edison, right? And they mentioned the landfill. So I called up the uh, one of the senators right away, wrote to uh, the Sierra Club, and I said, just want to let you know, our waste, Pennsylvania, possible radioactive waste, is going to New Jersey. Do you want this? New Jersey is kind of polluted already. <laughs> Do you want more? Do you want our waste? They got right on top of it. It's no longer going to New Jersey. Where is it going? to Pennsylvania, we have a bunch of landfills. So I said, if you're gonna pollute, at least do it in your own state. Don't go across the border. Do you know what percentage of recycling? They, I can't get a straight answer, but I see, I would say a good amount of recycling. I, it might even be mostly, but I can't get a straight answer from any of them. So I see all different figures. But it looks like, I would say a lot, as far as recycling it and having a closed loop. They do have impoundment ponds now where they put water and they're trying to fresh water in there so that they can use that water closer to home and hose it out. So they are doing some of that. Because when you recycle, you're concentrating the... the well, that's another question, right? How, how concentrated is it and uh, what are we doing with that? Because when it comes up the second time or the third time. Right. We also have bubbling now. There's a creek behind here. We're full of water, you know, the state, as I'm sure New York is. We have Snake Creek right there, and we have Silver Creek that comes out of that park that we met at. Snake Creek now, the fishermen who fish there every year have alerted us, bubbling is coming up. Several spots of bubbling, and it's all methane, and we had DDP go in there, and they verified it. Methane is coming up uh, in several spots, and you'll see the bubbles start from the bottom, and we have videos of this too. And it goes all the way up like a stream to the top, and then it stops, and then it continues. One stream after another, there's maybe a minute in between. So now we have bubbling in the creeks, but uh, nobody's really alarmed except for a handful of us. You know, this is all part of uh, part of doing business.